Welcome to this new video, chapter 12, the design of the tax system. This is uh, the part of problems and application. Remember, this is a book of Gregory Mankiw, Principles of Economics, 7th edition. In this video, we are going to work throughout exercise 1 to 5. So the first question says that in a published source or on the internet, find out whether the United States federal government had a budget deficit or surplus last year. What do policymakers expect to happen over the next few years? And actually, they provide a hint, they provide this website. So I went to this website and you can find a nice graph which is called total revenues and outlays. This is basically a graph which represents in y axis the percentage of GDP the, as a percentage of the gross domestic product. In the x axis we have naturally the time year by year. We have actually the real data until this fact, because this is uh, taken in, two, in 2011. So as you figure out here, during most of the time of the 20th century, the, uh, this time the outlays were higher than the revenues, is what we called in economics uh, budget deficit. So the government is spent more money than the revenue. Just during these two, uh, around these two, three years, we saw a different trend comparison with the other total uh, real total time that we provide here in this graph, where the revenues were above the outlays is what we call a budget surplus, but the trend continue as the same as before, then afterwards we will have the same. We will have here when the whole, the in this case the budget deficit was even higher as a percentage of the GDP, and then after the this value, this is going to be a kind of convert but actually it's going to be kind of the same slope, it's going to be the same uh, trend, around 16% of the revenues and the outlays is going to be the same, around 20% according to this trend. So, according to this graph, we can conclude that United States is considered a budget deficit during most of the time. Okay, then the second point says, the information in many of the tables in this chapter can be found in the economic report of the president, which appears annually. Using a recent issue of the report at your library or on the internet, answer the following questions and provide some numbers to support your answers. Actually, they uh, provide the same another website where we can find this information to tell you the truth. Unfortunately, I didn't find the the, um, the information that was required, so uh, I should have uh, found this information throughout the internet. So the first one, which actually uh, we can take this information out the of the chapter, is about the figure one because uh, it shows that the government revenue as a percentage of local income has increased over time. In the, is this increase primarily attributable to changes in federal government revenue or in state and local government revenue? So basically, we have here, as we saw uh, previously, uh, in our chapter, the financial overview of the United States government, uh, we visualize that um, actually uh, there is a, a trend, there is a growth of the of the GDP as a percentage of the sorry the revenue as the percentage of the GDP. 
So here we visualize that it has increased both with a great uh, slope after the Second World War, naturally because during this war uh, the government taxed in a higher way to finance, finance in some way the war. But after that, after that um, total government peak, it was like kind of the average, it was practically, we can say that it still, still remained the, the same. So here we visualize that the higher part of the revenue is the federal and the state and local, uh, they complement the other part, but they are they are actually we can say that just like one third of the federal uh, revenue here uh, the second point the second part b of 2b it says looking at the combined revenue of the federal government and state law of local governments how has the composition of total revenue changed over time are personal income taxes more or less important social insurance taxes, corporate profit tax. So here um, you can go through this link actually in the information of the video you can access to the same link I'm going to provide to you this one. So I found this one just like surfing on internet and basically what uh, I found here in the tax policy center it was something a uh, really nice graph because here we have the total federal receipts uh, by source of the share of national GDP. Again, we have here the as a percentage percentage of the GDP, and here we can find that actually the all all of the receipts they remain almost the same, just with with two main changes. The first uh, trend the change because it increased throughout. Uh, the last 60 years is the social insurance tax. It became uh, the second more important uh, income for the federal uh, government just like became from 2% in 1950 through uh, around 6% in the in the current year. The other uh, trend that we can represent here that it has uh, gently decreased uh, constant throughout uh, most of the, the last 40 years and with an important um, uh, recover in the last four years uh, we can see this one the corporate income tax with the maximum value was around 6% and nowadays we have two percent. Here uh, we have the higher one which is the individual income tax and this one which was the third uh, the very beginning of this graph and was the, the last one is the excise tax and this one we have other taxes in the fourth position. Um, here we have another question that actually I found the same and just surfing internet. It was like looking at the combined expenditures of the federal government and state uh, and local governments. How have the relative shares of transfer payments and purchases of goods and services changed over time? As you visualize before, uh, I just had in consideration the federal um, the federal re receipts and here I just have in, co in consideration the state and local direct general expenditures throughout 1977 to uh, 2012. So here the, again we have here as, a, as the total of the actually here is not the GDP we have here the I guess the, the the participation would say the share and we have the higher one is the key k of education the second one we have public welfare which has increased until values of 18.8 percent and they uh, to tell the truth as a matter of fact I can say that this remains almost the same just this one 10 percent which is higher education health and hospital 
Chels with 9.3, Highwood with 6.1, and Police, it remains almost the same. Okay, yeah, it keeps actually the same during all the all the years. So naturally you can find the other one just for the federal government to represent the same idea. Here the third question says, the chapter states that the elderly population in the United States is growing more rapidly than the total population. Actually, actually it's not just a trend from, from United States but also for another part of the world. Uh, some yeah, as so example, we can say that Europe they have the same trend. So the elderly population they are growing faster. So in particular, the number of workers is rising slowly, naturally, because the in this case the born rate is different than people that they are getting older. And this time we have well the number of right retirees is rising quickly. So concerned about the future of social security, some members of Congress propose a freeze of the, on the program. So the first situation says, this is a really open question and you can analyze from the, your point uh, just if you have the argument to keep the idea. Because, because actually it's not something that uh, has the real true about this fact. So the first point says, if total expenditures were frozen, what would happen to benefits per retiree, to tax payments per worker? In this case, we need to assume that social security taxes and receipts are balanced each year. So it means that we need to take into account that all the income need to be the same as the expenditure is what we call a balance is not a surplus nor a deficit so this is the case so here if imagine this scenario that we freeze this social security benefit so we have that unfortunately the benefits per retiree will be lower okay so they will have less income less benefits okay so definitely the retiree welfare uh, could be lower then naturally all the workers that in some way they support okay they sponsor this policy they don't pay such as those taxes that, that they paid before in order to compensate in some way okay so the tax payments uh, will be lower now when we have the second situation imagine that benefits per retiree were frozen what would happen to total expenditures to tax payment per worker it can, it's going to be exactly the same because Remember that this social security is one of the most important programs for the government. So if they don't need or they don't have to pay those those huge quantities, definitely total expenditures will be lower because they don't they don't need to pay that because the benefit is frozen. And then the tax payments again they don't need to pay this but we are here what we call in economics ceteris paribus all the other stuff remains the same because if this social uh, security even they don't need to pay that but but workers they still pay the same quantity and this that was previously uh, provided to social security is going to be provided to police to war the, then the tax payment per worker will remain the same but we are assuming here that setter is part of it we are we are just focusing in this part in this particular um, point now if tax payment per worker were frozen what would happen of total, total expenditures to benefits to per retiree Again, 
when we froze with the, when we freeze that the total expenditures will be lower and at this time as I said before assuming that all money rising is for right to re program then the tax payment per worker will be lower what do your answers to part a b and c imply about difficult decisions faced by policymakers this is definitely what we call that trade-off because you have one position which is going to be charged less to current workers okay or in this case could some benefits to right to people definitely right to read people will still uh, receive this money but is going to be paid by current workers and remember the current workers they are less or they are growing less than the elderly people that they become uh, retiree so for this reason is a really high burden to the current workers then at this time, it's so hard to find uh, how to finance high regulatory amount of people with current workers. Definitely, it's going to be even if you charge companies. Remember, this share is going to be split by the company and the current workers. Then, what is could be possible is at the end is a kind of policy with lower benefits, which is going to be lower payments or still they remain the same but this cake it has to be divided the same quantity to more people that they are becoming retiree but one important fact is like the old retiree people they need to consume so if they have left less money so consumption will be affected and at this point retiree people that they consume due to the decrease of the income they won't consume so at this time it's going to be affected what we call the multiplier in economics this fact that make okay the retiree people consume so they go to the supermarket in supermarket imagine all these people they are uh, people that they are in the age to work okay so they won't receive this income previously so they could be uh, cut on wages or even um, places to jobs so it's going to be kind of a cycle so in some way it's going to be even an effect to the same current workers so the fourth point says suppose you are typical person in United States economy so here is the case you pay 4% of your income in a state income tax so here is the first fact you have all your income you need to pay 4% this is what we call the state income tax then 15.3% uh, of your labor earnings and federal uh, payroll taxes so this one is for your federal payroll taxes then you also pay federal income taxes as in table 3 table 3 we have here which is provided by the same book then it says how much tax of each type do you pay if you earn twenty thousand dollars a year taking all taxes into account what are your average marginal tax rates then we are going to figure out what's going on so here is the money that you need to pay for the state income tax so it's going to be the total income that you receive per year is going to be 20,000 then the state income tax is going to be 800 then the federal payroll taxes is going to be again uh, of your labor earnings so it's going to be 15.3 percent of your 20,000 so then it's going to be three thousand sixty dollars then this taxable income is going to be the remain uh, it's going to be the subtraction of 20,000 minus 800 minus 3,660 and this is going to be charged by 15 percent because you are going to be 
around this part. From this is going to be your taxable income. Then it's going to be three um, three thousand. Then uh, at this time, I'm sorry, here is going to be this this three thousand. It's going to be actually it's going to be this one two thousand four hundred twenty one. Then we have this one, which is going to be the the total tax, which is going to be six thousand two hundred eighty one over. 20,000 it turns out 31.41 percent this is your average tax then your marginal tax will be exactly when the tax overpass this volume which is going to be the next stage of the taxable income it will be 25 percent so this is going to be the the marginal tax when you when you when you need to to pay more so now, when you have this one for uh, forty thousand dollars, you have a higher, a higher revenue. Then the state income tax is going to be this one. The federal payroll tax is going to be this one. And the federal payroll tax is going to be this value six thousand one hundred twenty. And then uh, the taxable income is is going to be uh, um, again this fifteen percent of this value and then it's going to be this one and your total taxes is going to be 12,562 and then the average test is going to be uh, remain the same and then uh, if you overcome this value it's going to be uh, 25% then the last point of this video is about uh, some states ex exclude necessities such as food and clothing from their sales tax. Other states do not. Discuss the merits of this exclusion consider both efficiency and equity. So here, when you exclude them, the necessities as food and clothing, basically you gain on equity. Because when you charge them, it doesn't differentiate if when you are paying you are paying for food or clothing, you are rich or you are poor. So as a percentage, as an average tax, is going to be definitely higher for poor people. So for this reason, we gain an equity. And then other part what we have uh, in terms of efficiency, we have something because when you don't charge uh, any tax, you automatically you take out or you roll out the dead weight loss it will disappear and the other part uh, which is about efficiency it's it's important to take into account that it's between quotation marks it's really easy to charge these goods you just need to pay for that one one share well the share is going to be uh, given to the government so in terms of taxes uh, this is a low administrative burden so that's it so that's all uh, i do notice is kind of the subtle this this uh, this chapter but i hope it is worth and it provides an idea how you can solve these exercises and any doubt any suggestion anything that maybe could be better i'm open to these suggestions so have a great day and see you the next video bye bye